So yeah, um, my name is Solomay. Um, you can also call me Oak, that's my nickname. Um, I'm here to talk about um, the work that I've been doing um, Code for Matter Reactor. So, uh, what is Code for Matter? Well, it is a tool that formats your code so that it conforms to style guide. Um, for example, here's um, um, JavaScript code, and you can use a tool in pretty uh, super massive tool. Um, a code that is actually understandable, readable. Right? I, I cannot like really read the code on it. And the aim of uh, this tool that I'm developing is the same, but for Racket. So I have this code on the left. I cannot really read it, but the hope is that once I uh, format it, I can read it. And we can take a look at the um, Racket um, style guide to see what is like you know um, in scope for the formatter. So we can say is you know stuff uh, stuff like where to put parentheses. What the indentation should be, uh, what should be the appropriate line width, or where to put line breaks, uh, what's uh, about the spacing and stuff like that. Now, what is not code for matter is not a code indenting tool, right? Racket already has a code indenting, uh, indenting tool, a uh, Docker Racket, and it will indent the above code to the below code. Um, and as you can see, um, it only cares about indent uh, indentation, so um, it will not care about inline spacing. You can see there's a missing, I mean, technically you should put um, a space there, it does not care about that. Um, it will not add or remove line breaks. Right. It's also not a code refactoring tool. Yesterday, uh, Jack talked about missing tags. That's a code refactoring tool. Um, for example, it would turn something like this con expression into uh, this case expression that looks nicer. Um, the code formatter does not concern with this kind of um, refactoring. Um, it aims to be very fast and like do trivial things like you know um, spacing and stuff like that. All right. So why code formatter? Why do we want to do code formatting? Well, we want to make uh, unreadable code readable, right? Again, uh, this code I cannot really read it. After I format it, I can read it. Um, now you may say, well, no one writes code like that. <laughs> and I will say that, please go to the Discord bracket channel and see all the code that students write. <laughs> yeah, it, it does look like that. But even then, let's, um, yesterday we see um, code from uh, hard sales, um, full comes in the size of it puts everything online. Right? So this is like another application of it. You can, um, Format synthesized code to um, a better code. More importantly, um, it allows you to follow consistent style, right? Um, so you know, in CLI languages, we have debate about where to put braces. We put it on the same line or different lines, stuff like that. In Racket, there are many forms where people have different convention, like this between zero. Where do you put the first ex expression? And so, um, I mean, Jack might say that, yeah, we should have like one consistent way to do it throughout the whole language. For me, I just only want to advocate that under the same project, we should be consistent, right? And so I provide a way for you to do that. So you, you can be okay with like, you know, one way or the other, but it should be consistent. You can say some projects even like run the code formatter as a part of that, um, what is it called, CI, right? And um, make sure that like the code are properly formatted, otherwise it will check the, uh, the pull request. And this is the reason why um, many mainstream languages, actually most mainstream languages have code formatters, some of them are even built in, right? It allows uh, developers to do this kind of stuff. And lastly, this is the same point that Jack made um, yesterday, uh, which is that it's good for Education, right? You can uh, teach coding, st uh, coding style, and also can help spotting mistakes. So, um, programming classes usually don't teach coding styles explicitly. Right? There may be uh, some coding guide uh, guideline that they usually not come with. So, students, or, or at least me, I, I learn coding styles by you know taking a lot of taking a lot, a lot of uh, taking a look at a lot of examples, and. 
um, but then they need to know what is a good code. But this tool would allow you to, you know, see more data points from your own code. And it also allows them to focus on what really matters, which is actually programming, right? They do not need to, like, you know, concern about uh, uh, this minor uh, concerns. And lastly, um, well, feedback from grading is low, right? When I was a TA here, um, um, I do uh, provide feedback to students when uh, they made like poor a statistic choice, but it takes several days for, them, uh, for the feedback to get to the student. But the code formatter will uh, allow them to get immediate feedback. Now, for help spotting mistakes, this is um, again the concord that um, that I showed earlier. One really common mistake is that they accidentally drop bracket. But it's a valid bracket code. If you run it, it actually works, yeah. right? <laughs> code formatter would reveals that the above code actually is equivalent to the middle code, and you know it looks wrong. So that's how you can spot a mistake. So, okay, um, code formatted for racket. Um, what's the current status of um, racket? Well, before I develop this thing. Well, it essentially only has code in the entire the box world. There's code formatted like racket slash pretty, but it doesn't work quite well. For example, with this kind of comments, it doesn't care about the parentheses chair and stuff like that. And racket here is the one for code formatted, right? This is like, you know, people from Slack asking, that's a code formatter, here's Reddit, here's Discord. And I'm among one of those people, right? And eventually I was like, yeah, um, fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so initially I thought, yeah, should be easy, right? Because racket is a parenthetical, parenthetical syntax. It's expression, everything is parentheses, and stuff like that. Should be easy, Com especially when compared to like you know uh, languages that have more sophisticated syntax like JavaScript and stuff like that. And even if it's not as easy, at least I can use whatever approach that they use. <laughs> so, so that's not true. <laughs> Conformating for a kid is difficult. And um, well, first problem is that Racket is a language or a programming language, right? It has this thing called hash lag. And so it's not necessarily parenthetical syntax. You could have like hash lag algo. You could have hash lag python. You can even make up your own language. Like this is a, a language that I made uh, when I studied recursion, recursion theory. Um, yeah, I mean, it's completely um, made up syntax. But um, so how do you call for it? That's why we need it to be extensible to support formatting in the hash rank. And even if we focus on formatting hash rank racket, well, racket has a thing called macro, right? You can extend, um, uh, you can essentially uh, do user-defined form, uh, if, uh, yeah, do user-defined forms. And so we need to be flexible to support uh, formatting uh, these user-defined forms. <laughs> and lastly, racket has this thing that is uh, you know, when, when you do uh, the function application, you usually uh, format it like that. And this space here is what we call dynamic alignment. Now in Java, this used to be a, I, I, I think this used to be a pretty popular style as well. None of the code formatters support it. It will force you to write like that instead, which is fine for Java, but I don't think anyone will be happy if I say that yeah, you're not allowed to do the left thing and you need to uh, write racket code on a, uh, um, the right one instead. So, um, we need to support dynamic alignment. What, what is dynamic alignment means that it's sensitive to the previous line, not just the messy Right, yeah. So, for example, here it is sensitive to how, uh, this, uh, how wide this identifier is. Right. Whereas in Java, if you format it like this, it's like, you know, static. Always like two spaces and stuff like that. 
So we need, um, well, I mean, again, looking from the lens of, um, you know, language-oriented programming, I think that we should use language to solve this problem. So what I think we will solve this problem is to design an expressive domain-specific language for describing styles. So now let me um, give a tour uh, on the infrastructure of FMT and see how we solve these problems. So FMT is essentially split into two parts, the front end and the formatters. Um, the front end is, in, uh, is essentially the interface that FMT users interact with. They can um, provide parameters to adjust the front end and the underlying formatters. The formatters are not provided by FMT, well, I mean, that's one that is provided by FMT, but more generally, it is going to be uh, provided by language designers. And FMT simply um, relay uh, the parameters to these performers. So how does the front end work? Well, the front end reads uh, four level uh, configurations, which has a different uh, priority. So that's a file based directive. Uh, that you can use to uh, configure um, FMT. So bracket doesn't really have um, directive notation, so I invent one it looks like that. Um, it, which is really nice for um, allowing you to communicate with external tools. Um, so for example here, I, uh, I have a parameter named enable when it's set to false, it means that here, please do not format this file. Right? Maybe this file has something that is really sensitive to white space, and you don't want to be formatted. So you would write something like that to say, please do not format this file. You could also change a parameter like width limit. Right? Here we set the width limit to 20, so it will um, not allow the stuff to go uh, too far. You can also change the formatter. For example, here we have uh, the language, a uh, recursive language, and I change the formatter to another one. Um, that's also part-based config, uh, configuration. Um, this is essentially a project-wide configuration where you create a file in FMP config, and then uh, you write a function uh, config map that consumes a part and return configuration. And it will, when you uh, ask it to format every file in the project, it will use that. You could. Uh you can give that a path to a subdirectory within the project? Yeah, right. Okay, so you can have like your docs and your tests and whatever get formatted separately. Yeah, right. And, and, and you can also like, you know, disable it if like, it's something that you do not want to format. Question? Yeah, that's, you, you are going to format the whole file or not the whole file. Mm -hmm. um, I shall Partial formatting is like limited, um, it's supported, but only interactively, not automatically. So you, you will see that in, um, in a couple um, of slides. Um, and there's a language-based configuration. This is not configurable by, by users, but it's configurable by um, language designer. And so in bracket, there's a thing called get info protocol. So this allows uh, people to attach arbitrary information to a uh, language. And so language designer can provide a default for that particular hash length. So they can say, well, for this recursive language, please attach um, this uh, configuration for the formatter. And lastly, there's a fallback configuration, which right now says, please format all the arcane files with um, assuming that they are as expression or syntax. And again, there are priorities, right? And so what I want to do here is that I want to provide good default, um, but also allow you to um, config stuff, override stuff appropriately. And so that's it. That, that's the whole front end. Now let's talk about the formatters. Formatters are actually very simple. You just need to write a function that consumes a string and return a string. Meaning that consume the uh, input program and you return the uh, formatted program. And that's it. <laughs> no, how, right? <laughs> okay. So um, that's why I provide this side recipe for creating uh, FMT formatters. Um, well, we all know that string is difficult to work with. 
So first step is to uh, create structured data by um, reading um, this input string and transform it to um, concrete snack tree. Very important that you produce a concrete snack tree and do not use uh, the default uh, reader that bracket provides. Why is that? Well, you have stuff like infix notation, three dot less than dot four, but when you read it in bracket, it gets turned into less than three four. But I mean, users intentionally write three dot less than dot four, right? They probably do not want it to automatically get turned into the right one. Similarly, there's a um, comment which completely uh, get it ignored by the reader. And so it's very important that uh, we want to produce countries in next tree. Um, I don't have like, you know, automatic way to do that. You need to deal with the complexity uh, yourself. But um, one nice thing, I, I, I guess one, one good first step is to use the color mixer because that usually handles um, comments and stuff like this explicitly. But then you need to uh, do the passing step yourself. Well, and then I told you earlier that um, I believe that we can solve this problem using uh, by designing um, a domain-specific language for describing styles. Actually, that exists already. It's called pretty printing language. Right? And so the next step is to transform countries in hex tree into a document in a printed printing language to encode all possible styles that you want to consider. As an example, let's say that this is uh, my syntax tree, right? It's a function application um, of f and uh, two arguments a, 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 and b, b, b. Now, I want the output to be either one of these, depending on, let's say, uh, the remaining way, right? Uh, depending on your available space. So, I would produce a document that looks like that. Um, you do not need to read it closely, but all I want to say is that there are features that allows you to, you know, do indentation, do spacing, do new lines, or create more layouts, stuff like that. And here's kind of like the correspondence between uh, the output layouts and the, uh, the document. And then the last step is to invoke a print printer to transform the document into format of code. And this step is actually very easy for language designers. It's just calling whatever print printer that you want to use. Well, unfortunately, um, there's a bad news, which is that existing print print uh, thing technologies are limiting. So some are not expressive. For example, it doesn't support then we can some are not efficient, they have exponential time. In particular, those that support dynamic alignment have exponential time. And lastly, some are not optimal, they exceed the line, uh, the width limit, even if it's avoidable. And so as a part of this work, I, um, well, so, so these are kind of like uh, the printer printing, uh, printing uh, technologies in the literature, you can see you know, all, all this stuff. They can roughly be grouped into two categories, and then there are some that are that doesn't fit either category. Um, as a part of this work, I um, designed a new printer printer um, that we call expressive printer printer. It is more expressive than every of these uh, printer printer. It is more efficient than that group, and it is more optimal compared to those groups. And so I don't want to get a technical. Uh, regarding this, but my recommendation would be, yeah, use all <laughs> expressive with So, yeah, we, we think that this, uh, we think that these challenges can be addressed by using, uh, you know, um, the FMK protocol and our explicit And that's it uh, for the formatter. Now, I don't have much time left, so I'm going to skip this, but it's roughly like how the racket code should look. Um, so yeah, using the design recipe, I create um, the racket formatter. And um, one thing that I want to note is that it's actually pretty straightforward using the explicit printer. And um, 
it recognizes the form symbolically because again, we want it to be fast. We don't want to spend time doing micro expansion and stuff like that. Although there are projects that um, try to use um, the expander to get more info of it. Um, and then you can customize stuff. I will get into this uh, in the demo, so I will skip this one. Let me give you a demo. So, um, this is, um, you see this? This is uh, what gets the size yesterday. In what you can do is you can run that. You come back and say, um, So here I have um, saying that uh, please disable this file, right? And so if you try to format it, nothing will happen. Now if you will change that to true, and now you try to format it, things will change. Um, you can also try to selectively um, only select that and format it, and then only that part is formatted. The rest are not formatted. Um, let's try another thing. Um, let's add some comment, right? And then now I want to format the whole thing. And so you can say that it's overadded as a comment. And if you uh, put that above, obviously that's not going to work, right? It's going to produce another uh, program. But yeah. Um, for the next two examples, unfortunately, it's currently buggy in Docker record, but it's not buggy in the command line. And so I think this is also. Um, a good place for me to switch to the command line to show that it works. So, um, I have this program. Um, it's in a uh, racket base, right? So, I say that, yeah, please do the racket base, uh, like formatting. And right now, I comment out this thing. So, this doesn't exist yet. So, what we have, uh, this defined um, slash contract is not in a racket base. And so, if you try to format it, it will think that this is just a function application. Right? So it couldn't be in one line. Now when I comment that out, and I run this, because I say that please format define slash contract, just like model, where, where model is, is a form that um, has two things after that, uh, after uh, the form name. It will put the function header and the contract in the same line and then put the body up. Now some people, some other people might want to format this just like model plus instead, where uh, you put a function header here and then the contract in the next line and then the body up. So that's also possible. Um, the next one is this recursive language. Right? They have spaces here. So what you can do is you can format um, this. Oops, um, it does not work. Why is that? Well, because I have this project wide configuration right, that says that um, if it is a, an RKT file, uh, do the default thing, but otherwise disable it. And so now let me uh, take that out. That to recognize uh, the file name of RL, which is what uh, this file is in. And now I can format it, and then it produces the correct thing. So yeah, that's the demo. Um, so this is from uh, FMT 2.0, um, support formatting hash length and partial program formatting. It also uh, support Dr. Racket using a uh, quick script. Um, format uh, 1.0. Um, it's already you know released and people have been using it. Um, it has two Emacs plugin. It's called uh, Box Support, and um, I believe, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what Eastern is currently using it in the class as well. Um, so yeah, um, here's um, the one of the Emacs plugin that uh, uses our uh, formatter. People have been contributing to it, so. Hopefully that means that like you know is understandable enough for people to you know contribute. Um, here's an example of how uh, you would use it in uh, the Discord. Funding. 
and yeah, it made people find it helpful. Now we write a blog. Um, um, yeah, I don't think I want to uh, have time for questions, so I, I will just skip this for now. But details are in the documentation. I think. And lastly, I want to thank uh, all these people who uh, give feedback and contribute, especially Justin, who uh, collaborated with me on the uh, expressive inventor. And that will be it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, time for a few uh, questions, comments. Shall we run this on Sri Ram's code? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I uh, want to format a new form that I wrote specially, but I don't know of any existing forms that already look like that, how difficult is it for me to? Right. So that's where you would um, use the print printer directly, and um, it's actually well, it depends on a lot of uh, factors. Um, so, oh, but by the way, this is how you would use the um, the um, get info protocol earlier. Let me show how it looks like. No, that's not the way fine. Config bracket private convention. So um, let's take a look at of formatting. Um, Okay. Yeah, like this is formatting for like uh, structs. You would you know, you know extract stuff from the node and um, yeah, essentially it's just uh, producing some um, document based on the um, the node. I hope to switch this to syntax object at some point. So right now I have my own syntax tree. But I think that uh, syntax object would uh, look nicer. So yeah, hoping to do that uh, before releasing. Um, but usually, um, you you have yeah. So so one other thing is that a lot of the forms are like you know really look similar, right? Um, like you know, con cast lambda match lambda match lambda star match lambda star star. They all look similar to each other, and so with high chance. The form that you were looking for probably already exists. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Do you think it's ready to run this over like all of the repositories? Yeah, that, that would be um, a good thing to try in the future. Um, I again, there are stuff that I still want to do, like you know, switching to syntax object and stuff like that. But after that, yeah, I think it would be worth trying. Yes, sure. One place I think this would be really useful if you could plug this into the stepper. Mm -hmm. uh, because the stepper does so much violence to code. <laughs> 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 but uh, if, some, if something could actually do a good job of producing good output, it would be a much Yes, I agree. Please. That's an immediate practical thing that it's going to be easy. Yeah. So the stepper is sort of like. It's a synthesized code application you mentioned earlier. Right. Yeah. I think it's just going pretty quickly. Sorry, what is that? It's essentially a synthesizing code, right? And so that's, yeah, fits what I said earlier. Yeah. Last question. If you reformat only a subterm, will it infer the indentation from the surrounding code? Right. So, yeah, that should be, um, that should be a more advanced um, formatting option where it Ask you what should be the indentation because in general we will not be able to figure that out. It depends on many factors, right? It depends on the language as well. So yeah, um, there should be uh, a dialogue asking what should be in the, in the current indentation. Okay, that's fine. Oh yeah. Um, so about this um, synthesis application, uh, does this have an API that I can like call it from? Because right now I'm literally just calling like pretty format and it's awful. Um, so yeah, that that should be an API. Okay. Yeah. Like well, right now, even for, for uh, even one point oh, that's already an API. Okay, but I will. it will get replaced. So don't do that yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Roy.